Hi, welcome to Time Warp Wife Ministries. I'm your host, Arlene Schacht, and we're currently going through a Bible study on the book of Ezra. This video is a focus on chapter nine. If you don't have a copy of the study guide yet, it looks like this. You can find it on amazon.com or amazon.ca. It's called Ezra Bible Study, Rebuilding the Temple, Restoring the Heart. If you don't have a copy of the Bible study, just head over to my website at timewarpwife.com and you'll find everything you need there to join us. All right, this one is called um, Don't Waste the Grace You've Been Given. And what we're looking at in this chapter is that Ezra finds out that the, the Israelites, they had been intermingled with people from other lands. Now, the problem isn't only that they were intermarrying and intermingling with them. The problem really here is that they were also living according to their abominations. So what they were doing is they were worshiping their gods. They were um, making sacrifices to these false gods. They were living, they weren't living according to God's law. And that's where the real problem would lie here is that they weren't serving God. And so Ezra is grieved, and we'll learn about that in this chapter. He grieves just as the Holy Spirit grieves when we sin. So, um, starting on page 63, we've all heard it said, how could it be sin if it's not hurting anybody, or how could it be wrong if no one gets hurt? The internet is full of those questions, and perhaps you've entertained the idea yourself. After all, how bad can it be if no one gets hurt? Turning to this chapter nine, we read, the people of Israel, including the priests and the Levites, have not kept themselves separate from neighboring peoples with their detestable practices, like those of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, I hope I pronounced that right, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. Reading on, we see that Ezra is grieved for his people who have not only mingled with the strangers from other lands, but many had intermarried, which was strictly forbidden in Jewish law. In order to gain a deeper understanding of this, let's look at this verse from Deuteronomy chapter seven. I want us to turn and read that one together. Chapter seven, verses two to three. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. This commandment was given to them before they entered the promised land. It was symbolic of life in the spirit and those who return to their sin. There's a strong parallel here to the admonition given to us that we must leave sin behind as we enter the spirit-filled life. We find it sprinkled throughout the New Testament, but here's one verse that sums it up well. It's from Galatians 5, 24, and it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So what this was symbolic of is that when they went to war with a certain land, they weren't to mingle with them. That represented the sin and they were to leave that behind as they moved along in search of their promised land. So once you're free from sin, don't return to it, don't entertain it, don't engage with it, don't be married to it in the sense that you carry it into your new life with Christ, destroy it. There's an old Cherokee legend about two wolves at war, which serves to remind us how dangerous it is to entertain sin. It goes on to say that one night, a grandfather was teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It's a terrible fight between two wolves. One is evil, anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, and false pride, he continued. The other is good, joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every person you know. The boy paused to think for a moment before looking up at his grandfather. Which one will win, he asked. The wise man simply replied, it's the one that you feed. 
When we crucify our sin, we no longer feed that sin. We don't entertain it, meditate, or engage with it. Those who are Christ delight in his law. We meditate on it, his word. We obey the word. We feed our minds with his goodness and truth. And that's how we crucify the flesh and win the good fight. Don't waste the grace you've been given. Don't treasure the sin that you're in. God's plan for your life isn't far off in the future. It's a plan that starts here and now. It's a life of abundant joy and incomparable grace. Why put that off for tomorrow when you can be blessed today? Satan comes to kill and to steal and destroy, but he can't touch the treasure inside. He'll try, I assure you of that, which is why it's important that we're walking in faith. He can't steal your joy if it's rooted in Christ. He can't rob you of peace if you're grounded in faith. And so, my friend, salvation is more than simply a ticket to heaven. Someday, it's a relationship with God, and that starts right here and right now. When you truly love God, it's not hard to see why the Holy Spirit is grieved. Grieved by the sin that we return to. Grieved each time we try to minimize sin. Grieved by the sin that sent our Lord to the cross. Remember Ezra is a type of Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, which means that he typifies or reflects the character of the Holy Spirit. So as we look at this chapter, we see Ezra grieving over the sin of the people. It offers us a parallel to the spiritual life, one in which the Holy Spirit grieves over sin. We see him interceding on behalf of God's people in much the same way that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us today. Let's look at Romans 8 verses 26 to 27. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he that serveth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Jews were God's chosen people. They were the ones entrusted with God's word, but with that blessing came responsibility. They were given strict laws to adhere to so that they might be an example for us and for ages to come. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 says, Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. What we're seeing here might sound to you like this is very strict. They weren't allowed to, to in, intermarry with those people. But the reason is that it is given to us for an example and it, paralyzes, it parallels something much greater, which is our separation from sin. When we gave our lives to Christ, we left sin behind, or at least we should have, if we love God the way that we say we do. Yet I wonder how many of those little sins are we still hanging on to? The ones we don't see as destructive, the ones we decided can stay. Maybe it's a bad temper. Maybe it's a habit of swearing. Maybe you're getting drunk on Saturday nights. Maybe you know it's there, but you've decided the sin is harmless enough to remain a part of your life. Maybe you're not ready to let go just yet. But remember the scripture that says, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. What we deem as harmless has the potential to destroy us in ways we could never imagine. Don't underestimate the potential destruction of sin. Don't fool yourself into thinking that a little sin is harmless. Don't trade the power of God's wisdom for the folly of your own. Don't choose comfort in lieu of courage. And that is it for chapter nine. I know these videos are pretty short, but there are so many of them to get through. So I keep them a little bit short for us so that we do have time each day to work on our Bible study instead of just hearing me talk. So yeah, if you don't have a copy of the study guide yet, once again, you can pick it up at amazon.com, Rebuilding the Temple, Restoring the Heart. And if you don't have a copy of the Bible study, go to my website at timewarpwife.com. 
And either way, you're gonna to wanna to go back to the website because I do have extra thoughts on the study there. I have extra thoughts on each chapter and I also have some free printables for you. And so we will talk to you in the next video, which is going to be our last chapter. And chapter 10 is called, It Only Takes a Spark. Hmm, familiar song. We'll talk to you later, bye-bye.